gone to schools and talked to students and uh, read to them. So I think it's very different when you hear a story yeah, read out loud. Yes, and I think it's they connect with the author. They connect with the author, and also you can see the students' engagement a little better and uh, see how the words flow when it is read out. So yes, I, I haven't had uh, been able to go to schools to talk to students, but I mean. I'm going in next week, uh, I'm next month to uh, Karachi Grammar School for their book week to talk to the six, uh, sixth grade students. Okay. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, uh, one other thing that I can notice, uh, I edit a storyline for the uh, horror schools uh, number of times in the recent uh, past two months. And uh, when the teachers would come up to me and say, okay, we have to say that 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 outsider coming in, I have a monkey show, I do my monkey show and then I you know, exit the equation. So, um, but you have, you know, a control relationship, a, a disciplinary sort of, sort of approach. So, uh, from this, you know, this is what, you know, from the start and from the system. And I therefore most of them that, uh, you know, schools which are systems can have this uh, advantage that they can have uh, teachers from one branch going to another branch to do story telling where they are outside so they don't have the control relationship with kids. And you know, uh, other branches, you know, like the revolving service of teachers of a story telling like, which, which can you know increase this uh, interaction with kids. I mean teachers, I mean they can learn I mean in human teaching that problem. Because makes it makes a huge difference. Um, is that you know, something that you see? You know, I'm so happy you said that because when we train teachers uh, to uh, tell stories, it means very simple. They're not telling a story, they're giving performance. Because children, you have to keep their interest. If you're just going to read out and start from the book, then they're, going to, they're not interested. The expression has to be available in your voice. Your, your facial expressions have to uh, be cited and they have to be appropriate if they're sad, they have to be sad, the tone has to be sad and they're excited. You can't, you know, then she said this. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. You know, it has to be, oh my god, did you see that? You have to have expression in your voice so the children keep their interest going. Every time you turn a page, they're going to be interested when you make it. You feel an interest. So I think that, that that's where the teachers sometimes forget that it's a performance. Yes, yes. And, and they have this you know, relationship with kids because they have a teacher that you can see that you can see that you can see that you can see that So of course the teachers back off and they can be concerned that they, they, they are uh, you know, treating territory which is you know, class kids and then stop their companies. Um, so uh, if the audience you now say, uh, which I'd like to share with you, is uh, my experience that the next week I learned. Because I write a fiction in English for kids. But uh, in the beginning, I started telling stories in English. And uh, I also tried telling in English. And I noticed that there was a huge uh, switch in the children's attention when you switch from English to or you know, English to Punjabi or any, any local uh, regional language. And they, uh, of course, there were a few kids saying, no, we want to listen to stories in English and you know, all that. But I thought, okay, you know, listen to the story and you know what I like to do anyway. And then if you don't like it, you know, don't understand it. Let me tell you that like again. And that changes, you know, um, they, they get animated, they get involved. And teachers have also told me that, you know, they use English as a disciplinary language. You know, if they're talking, um, they're, or, you know, they're having a lunch hour and they're, they're always going to go to them and say, okay, no talking, you know, do talk English. And then, they all quiet down because they don't want to communicate to each other in the English language. You know, then they, they are disciplined and then they are quiet down and you know, they are good kids. So that is also you know, a kind of relationship that kids have with, with, the, with the different languages. So I just thought I'll, I'll muscle my way to the panel and throw my interviews uh, into this as, as you know, my experiences that I've had in the story. Uh, one other thing I'd like to touch on is the focus on Creative writing for kids. Uh, it's not that I don't think that kids can write creatively. I think the focus on forcing kids to write to a deadline and to produce a story and you know a plot and all that. Um, that's something you know I'd like to discuss with you. Is that you know is writing at any level involved in your 
education methodology. Very basic. Very basic. Uh, but the children graduated in some very basic manner. But um, instead of writing, we do a lot of retelling. Retelling. Right? Because there are certain stories that children love and they obsess over, they want to keep reading it over and over again because they're trying to understand it, they're trying to imagine it, they're trying to whatever it is that's going on in their head. So they want to keep reading the same story over and over again. Mm -hmm. And the way we, they retell is, is where you understand what part is it that they're trying to process. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's the beginning of if you encourage children in the right way, that, 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 uh, that you can encourage them to start writing their own story. They don't like certain elements of the story, they like certain elements, and they want to put them together. So I think that it's, it's about creating the right piece. Right. right. Yes, I, I think your children can be encouraged to write. And uh, I don't know about writing to deadlines, but I, I know that uh, for, for myself, you know, how I started writing, uh, when I had a little bit of help from my sister, who's a novelist, and she, I was having a writing workshop in. in at the uh, Karachi Grammar School where I used to teach. And then she came up with this exercise where you ask a lot of questions. And I, and I tried this exercise, this was with, uh, between 14 to 16 year olds, and then I tried it again with 8 to 10 year olds, where I just went to them and made them say that, okay, have an image in your mind, and now start asking questions. Who is in this place? What, what do you know about this character? Does it have brothers and sisters? Describe the hand of this character. Why, what's so unusual about their hands? And just start asking them, you know, and then they started coming up with answers. And then I said, okay, now go ahead and try and write a story. And they actually came up with a lot of interesting things. Like, I, I gave them a list of 10 or 12 questions to the 14 and 16 year olds. And everyone came up with a big, wide variety of answers, I mean, of essays. And for the 6 and 8 year olds, I just put ideas out there and I just said, okay, you know, start telling this. I said, I would ask them a question, like, like imagine a place and they all close their eyes and of course they all have a place in mind. And then I said, okay, who's standing in this place and why is this person there? They all wanted to be a child. So I said, okay, do the parents know they're here? And they said, no. I mean, everyone's of unanimous who said no. And then some of them said, it's a secret. And I said, are they going to get into trouble? And everyone said, yes. I said, okay, now you can tell me why they're going to get into trouble. And you know, uh, you've, got, you've got the beginning of a story. So I think, I think it, and I think it's a, it's a useful exercise. And I use it myself when I'm writing. Like I said, when I had an image of the duck, I was like, why is the duck not going to eat lettuce feet in the water? And then I came up with this whole story of the duck who was afraid to fly. And I do the, I, I do the, sort of religiously ask myself questions um, to sort of give some background to the character. And suddenly I'd be like, oh, I know this person. And it sort of helps a lot in uh, storytelling, I think. And I think, it's, I think exercise is like, uh, you can teach children a little bit how to write. Like give them guidelines rather than just say, you know, here's a story about you know, sort of copy it or try and write in the style. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so um, I think um, I see a number of teachers here, a number of educationists, and um, I'd like to open the floor to you know comments and contributions from you um, sooner than you know I usually do at other times because you know we, we can add to this conversation. So uh, I like the mics in the front. Uh, could you please arrange the mics in the front? Uh, yes, and if there are any questions, uh, please. Uh, please and have you ever considered um, you know, doing audio CDs for you know, your stories? Because there are lots of books available on CDs uh, elsewhere. So this is something that I uh, was thinking before.
don't hide from that when I'm writing. Like my cat will suffer depression, or they will have a loss. And a lot of times, that's what helps me sort of you know, move the story along, that you know, something bad has happened to a person, and how they sort of, you know, how they sort of transcend that. And, uh, I think that's something that can appeal to both adults and ch but I think children and adults read it at different levels. And I think it's important to have that in a story because it gives a little more depth. Uh, so I think it's not, it's not and it, by not trying to cushion children by saying that, oh, you know, this is too, too dark for them, this is too depressing for them. I think I, I would say it's not shy away from those sort of elements in the story. Which children will take at a different level. Their parents will probably be read uh, uh, more into the story than they probably would. I have another question. Um, you just mentioned that uh, when from English storytelling, you especially Urdu, so the children about uh, whether they were somehow able to relate to it. My question is that there is not enough material in Urdu uh, stories, and Urdu is being taught, and the schools are equally responsible for it. Urdu is being taught as a foreign language and there's not enough emphasis on Urdu and we don't find enough material to talk to the children in Urdu. You know, this, a lot of it comes from teachers, uh, from, from the parents. And I have witnessed this as a publisher myself. I have witnessed और वहाँ पर मैं अपने स्टोरी कहने की और फिर एक किताब है जो अमेजिंग स्ट्रेस का मुश्किल दर्द आया है मैं बहुत पब्लिश नहीं हुआ तो ऐसे मुश्किल दर्द की निराली नहीं चाहिए अब बोथ बुक्स आर देयर बोथ आर प्राइस विद सेम प्राइस ठीक है बच्चा आया क्योंकि उसको मैंने उर्दू में कहानी सुनाई है इस टेकिंग ऑफ और वो आखिर में आप बच्चा आंखों में आंसू भरा हुआ वो इंग्लिश वाली किताब लेके चला गया। Because they would not let him buy a Urdu language book which he wanted to read। एक तो ये बात होगी। You know this is a lot। Schools are running, you know, a system। They are not publishers। They are not। They are catering to parents because they are the parents and the clients। Unfortunately, this is how we have, you know, we have grown up in society that parents have become clients and we have to listen to them। लेकिन एजुकेशनिस्ट्स कैन पुश नम बैक एंड बट फॉर देम दे नीड हेल्प यू नो दे कांट प्रोड्यूस देन ऑफ पब्लिशर्स दे नीड गुड प्रेशर व्हिच दे कैन फील कॉन्फिडेंट प्रेजेंटिंग फॉर फॉर द फॉर द पेरेंट्स डेरी अब और पढ़ने दे बच्चों को ये चीजें क्योंकि और उर्दू के नाम कहने चीजें नहीं हैं उर्दू के � पूरी दुनिया में होता है एक उनके पास बेवकूफ का मैजिक है जिसकी पांच सौ ट्रांसलेशन पांच सौ बर्फीली ट्रेंडिंग्स आपको मिल जाती है रिटर्निंग्स मिल जाती है हमारे पास पांच सौ चीजें पड़ी हैं उसकी एक भी आपको ट्रांसलेशन या रिटर्निंग नहीं होती यू नो दिस इज़ द प्रॉब्लम दैट वी हैव � it's difficult for the local market in some ways to compete with the foreign market because I mean, when I spoke to publishers, they said that the books that are produced in English are produced so beautifully with pop-up you know, pop pages and, and like I said, audio uh, CDs and, and uh, very colourfully done in, uh, in hardbacks, so very glossily done. And I spoke to a couple of booksellers about, you know, you don't have any local books. They said, it's a totally different market. They said the locally produced are much, uh, much uh, lower price, so you would think that they would give a run for, you know, for a, the, the run for the money for the foreign books. But they said the books which are so beautifully produced, children just go straight for them. And I think that it's a lot. I think the bonus is a lot of publishers also to produce books that sort of reach out to children, uh, whether it's in Urdu or in locally produced English book. Uh, there is a, there is a difference in the quality of the production. Especially when you're dealing with younger children, you're, you're dealing to them on a very visual level. So, and I just add to this, you know, I'll play a game just to add to this, what someone just said. The schools that I've been to, they are a school, what you call an English language school, where you think that English is you know, being forced on kids' uh, throats. My experience cannot be a kid, the teachers there and the administrations there are want Urdu language to be part of the education and they don't have any biases against the language. It's the parents who have the bias. 
I tend to agree with you there. Yes. Parents themselves actually don't know good enough. Ours is 
very older narrative, and that is what has been passed on. So the written word is something which is a lot more? No, that's not true. Uh, what I was speaking about was the written accounts of all mm -hmm. these oral narratives, which were written down in the 18th and 19th century. Mm -hmm. And it is not a kind of language which is completely inaccessible when I speak or just make by yeah. effort. Right. Um, and it can be, it can be done. And, and these are not even just multi-volume, long epic narratives like right. Minamba and Koshoba. These are some very short pieces that we find in these Yes. Um, but unfortunately, even when parents read to their children at home, they feel the need to read English books in one of the books. So it's, it's, it's just me. Or you are to be as successful as a successful doctor or a very successful surgeon or something like that. 
that is uh, that is completely wrong. Uh, for, for most for most of the writers, and this is not just the case in Pakistan, um, England may or UK may, market of orders, the average income would be for the year. It's about fifteen hundred dollars per month. This means they are going to get a lot of direct interest. Anyway, so coming back to you know how we can encourage uh, uh, more people to write is is to stop having a monetary relationship with our writing careers. If you are a professional writer, yes, then go out and stick your neck out and get it cut in the process and work very hard and you know then just be happy with the results. But if you want to be a creative individual who writes, so you know, we have to go back um, a century and a half back into our culture when poetry was not a profession. It was an intellectual exercise. So if we write and if we write well, we become more perfect thinkers. So, वो जो अभी है कि मैं जल्दी से किताब छाप के अपना नॉवेल नॉवेलिस्ट बन गए, तब वो बहुत अच्छी बात है बन जाइए। लेकिन यू नो देस अनदर एस्पेक्ट टू दिस दिस वॉल एक्सरसाइज ऑफ यू नो डेवलपिंग योरसेल्फ एस एन इंडिविजुअल एस एन इंटेलेक्चुअल एंड आई थिंक दैट शुड बी द फर्स्ट फोकस एंड I think a good way is children write for their school magazines. Yeah. I feel like I've been to different, like I've been to India and places, and I've never realized over there is that in their bookstores, there used to be like a bar me aata tha ki aaj yahan par is kitab ke writer bechhe hain and he'll be reading parts of his books and he'll be having gatherings. So I've been to bookstores and I have had that kind of cultural, like right now we're experiencing something which is very new. Who knew uh, LLF was going to be such a successful thing? Who even felt okay, it was real? But it has made such a big impact. I think they've seen people over here that I've not seen, like all these people mostly I know, but I'm just saying how is it possible that we come up in one room, under one roof? It is encouraging uh, writers, it is sure that writers. And of course, if we have this kind of uh, book readings, where Urdu readings, where English readings, where writers get a platform, and if they use platform, I'm sure they have audience here. I'm sure the people who are reading books over here. I'm sure we need it, our kids need it, and there is such an important need for it. Because I think everybody over here also feels So I think if that is done, I think writers can earn a lot of money. Someone should comment on this, I will ask for a question. I think it's good to, like, the same concept of giving writers a platform and giving them, like, if they have, at bookshops you have reading, so if you have more libraries, it would be another way of, like, you know, I think the need for libraries is just very great. Because it's not fair to go and wait parts of it or need the writer to get inspired. I suppose need to take responsibility. Yeah. For example, we do this, we have started last year called Reading Weeks, which we try to do a couple of times a year, which is exactly this, which we want to invite authors, or we want to invite parents to come and read to a group of children, encourages the children to read or write or look at their parents as a role. Yes. Role models. I think we as a society want to take responsibility to make it perceptual. और एक और जो मैंने प्रसी बोल दिया था सेकंड मैं एड करना चाहूँगा कि स्कूल्स ने किया है डी सर दिखना स्कूल जो मॉडल टाउन की ब्रांच है आई आई लर्न टाइम उसके रिसेंटली कि दे हैव ओपन देयर लाइब्रेरी थ्रू ऑफ़ दिया फॉर पेरेंट्स टू कम एंड कंसल्ट द बुक्स एंड रीड आउट किस सो द नंबर तो ये तो आई थिंक जब तुम इन द रॉक प्लेसेस हमको सिर्फ पहले तो इसको नोटिस नहीं करना चाहिए सामने के इतने पागल तो जमा होते हैं उर्दू और बाहर में भरी होती है तभी भी दोनों माइंड होती है उर्दू वाले तो बिचारे राइट हमारे जाते हैं कोई आ जाए हमारे पास और हमको कहना होगा वो पागल बैठ
पढ़ते हैं वो हमें एक चट लफ्ज की समझ भी ना आए पहली दफा तो हम बैठे जाकर तो आई थिंक इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट भी हमें खुद ही से विदाउट पॉइंटिंग फिंगर्स आई थिंक वी नीड टू मेक दी एफर्ट और पेरेंट्स नीड टू मेक दी एफर्ट एंड टीचर्स सिस्टम नीड्स टू मेक दी एफर्ट आई थिंक But uh, what happens uh, in a lot of places is that it's a community-based activity, and I think that's what perhaps we're lacking. Um, in every local area, you have a library where the parents or uh, volunteers will read the children every Saturday morning or whatever. And in schools, I volunteer a lot to give stories to children. So the schools make it an activity to get parents involved. We try to share what we're saying just now uh, about what we can help. This is this is the society's responsibility as a whole. We can't just look to the authors to know. Yeah. And the platform should be public platforms. Like it should not be just school because then the only the kids from school can go there or the kids from school can go there. Not everybody. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I always come back to language. Slightly a, I mean, a problematic subject for all of us. But uh, since there isn't. ए लैंग्वेज देखने के लिए हमारा तो अलग है ये क्या है ना हम उर्दू में सोचते हैं ना हम अंग्रेजी में सोचते हैं लेकिन the language that we think in becomes very important in developing language that we can get through. So I was just wondering, I don't know how this works out in the in the world of children's literature, but bilingual, I mean, can children be encouraged really to write bilingually? Is that bilingual? I mean. Because we think by it, um, so but is there is, is that happening? Or there is that happening? I think when they are in that creative phase, they just should be encouraged to write. That's it, and they can facilitate that. They can see what language they are comfortable in, take over, they can do more, and then you know just tweak it. But they should be encouraged to just first start writing. I think the first step is just encouraging. Right, but I think just speaking about children. इसमें कोई मॉडल जैसे तो है जीवन कोई उर्दू में लिखता है या पंजाबी में लिखता है या इंग्लिश में लिखता है आप देखिए इसमें इट कम्स फ्रॉम यू एस राइटर इस इन एट द पास ऑफ चॉइस आप जिसमें लाइन को लिखना चाहें एंड 19 सेंचुरी के अंदर उर्दू की जो शायरी के छोटे-छोटे मलबे छपते थे वो गुलदस्ता का जाता था और उसमें जो लोगों शायर थे अपने कलाम छपाते थे और वो मेरे पास भी कुछ कॉपी थे उसके अंदर उर्दू की नजमें उसके साथ साथ इंग्लिश के अंदर भी छोटी छोटी नजमें लिखी हुई तो उस जमाने से अंग्रेजी यू नो एट बी पार्ट फॉर लैंग्वेज ऑफ एक्सप्रेशन और उन लोगों को ही महसूस नहीं होता था कि उर्दू के साथ इंग्लिश कैसे छापे तो इट्स इट्स I um, also think that because thinking is context-based. I mean, if I am in my thinking talking to a certain person and I talk to him in a particular language, and as a child, probably if I've modeled the character after that person, I would be talking, you know, in my imagination to that person in that particular language. So thinking is not just bilingual or anything like that. It can include so many other languages, uh, you know, uh, language. of our provincial yeah. languages. Uh, you know, uh, we can think in three languages also, because uh, you know, we have over all of the provincial languages to do that. One that you have to be able to do. Yeah. So I have a question. <coughs> well, my question is, uh, it's just a general question I just had <coughs> on my mind, is that when we talk about storytelling, the biggest image what comes to our mind is, number one, A, what it is, a language development? or maybe imagination, or third, the value building. Mm. Uh, when we talk about the value building, you know, start building the values with the stories and literature and all that, then one thing which comes to another thing which comes to our mind, that probably that has to be coming from very uh, old folklore, the fables and uh, the old stories, which over the years, the passed down from generations and all that, where a part of religion is covered, a part of you know, our moral values are covered and all that. Is it possible? Because recently I'm reading some kind of children's literature, which is situational based, which is which deals with the real life. Because I couldn't find that horseman or.
that you know white fairy all around in my life, which I've been told through. Kind of that. Okay, I grew up and I grew and I just somehow you know uh, reconciled with a lot of realities. But it took a little time for me. Is it possible that since our children have to directly now deal with the with the reality world, is it possible that teaching that real life situational literature? Conflict, you know, management, that, that kind of stories should be the part of your curriculum. Number two, how much is the role of the human contact instead of just uh, maybe giving them books or retelling them or reading them? Which is more important? Uh, I just have a question to the general or to everyone, if like someone can answer. <coughs> I think there has to be a sort of, um, um, the, the, I, when I write about some fantasy worlds, like I have animals and snakes and squirrels all sort of living together and being friends and I think it, it, is, it, it, it is completely divorced from reality in that sense. But I think the message that comes through is very much about, it was about a snake looking for friends and how it makes friends and relying on each other. And I think there are certain values when whatever what you could use your medium, when you use the medium as a, a young girl in search of friends, or a snake out in search of friends. I mean, both of them are in my stories. Uh, there, is a, there is a real element which I think everyone can identify with less emotions, whether you put them in a uh, context of Karachi, or you put it in the context of the war, or you just put it in a, in a jungle somewhere, you know. The, but what keeps, it, what keeps the stories real is that what, most people can identify with certain emotions. And I think that's the sort of reality that sort of I feel sort of grounds a lot of stories. And then from there you can have the imagination. Because I think children, especially at a young age, they need a little bit of imagination. They like, I mean, you tell them that, as a child is young, I saw a fairy behind the tree, and they're like, where, where, you know, and oh yeah, I saw it too, and it's got wings, and it's got some, you know, their imagination is just fantastic in that sort of sense, and I don't think you try to say that we can't talk about fairies, we can't talk about because it's not real, because at especially at a certain age, it is just quite real in their mind, they're willing to believe it, and I think it's fun to, it's allowed to, it's good to let them have fun with that imagination. No, no, my, my yeah, my uh, just one very quick question, and then after oh. we wrap up the session, please, sir. My name is Sophia I'm basically early child education. So, I have a lot of my parents are very good. So, now, I have a lot of my parents who are very good. Our parents 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 छोटी उम्र से ऐसी आंसर डाल देते हैं जिसके अंदर से उनके अंदर स्टोरीज पढ़ने का या सुनने का वो कॉन्सेप्ट जो है बहुत कम जाता है और जब वो स्कूल में जाते हैं दैट इज आई बिलीव द फर्स्ट टाइम के वो स्टोरी से इंट्रोड्यूस होते हैं इन स्टोरीज के लिए ज्यादा जो होनी चाहिए तो आई आई वांट टू आस्क यू सेंस यू डील विद द लॉट ऑफ अर्ली चाइल्डहुड एजुकेशन दैट व्हाट्स व्हाट इज द रिस्पांस ऑफ देयर इज व्हाट इज आई बिलीव यू पेरेंट्स टुवर्ड्स टेलिंग देयर चिल्ड्रन स्टोरीज फ्रॉम अ वेरी यंग एज I think that uh, over the years, parents have made a lot of these things a responsibility of the schools. And in the last couple of years, the trend is changing, but the school is now trying to engage parents and get them to be involved in their children's education because it cannot just be the school's responsibility. When they go on, somebody else needs to take responsibility for those things. And so, um, so for example, a uh, recent uh, research showed um, delays in speech uh, uh, in speech of children. Children are going to start uh, start talking late. Young children. And that's because one of the main causes was exactly what you're saying, that parents or grandparents are actually not reading or talking to their children. Both parents are going to work, they're at home with the babysitter, who's on the TV, there's no way to communicate. So the, the there are no speech uh advantages happening with children. So it's it's a, it's a affecting the society in, in, in a
in uh, you know uh, becoming a part of that culture. Thank you, thank you everyone. I'd like to thank again Samantha C. Superior Suri and all of